we are going to be taking a look at factoring trinomials. When factoring trinomials, we will be looking for two numbers whose product is the end term, c, and sum is the middle term, b. While multiplying is the opposite of factoring, we are going to take a look at distributing the binomials below, highlighting the positive 7 and the minus 5. These, in fact, are the two numbers. Well, let's see the role they play when we distribute. The x in the front is multiplied by the x in the second bracket to give us x squared. x times minus 5 gives us minus 5x. Positive 7 times x gives us positive 7x. And positive 7 times minus 5 gives us negative 35. Well, now if we look, we can see a whole lot of blue in the second step. There's the minus 5, and there's the 7. And positive 7 times minus 5 gives us negative 35. The minus 5x and the 7x simplify to 2x. Well, now let's take a look at this exact same question from a factoring perspective. Well, we know we are going to be factoring it into two binomials, so we can set up our brackets below. We know there's going to be an x in the front of each bracket, because that creates the x squared. We are now looking for the two numbers whose product is minus 35 and whose sum is positive 2. It may take a bit to come up with these numbers, but we know they're going to be positive 7 and negative 5. Once we have these numbers, we can put them in the back of each bracket, positive 7 in the first bracket, negative 5 in the second bracket. Well, it's not always going to be this easy to find the two numbers, so let's take a look at another example. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at factoring trinomials, the backwards of multiplying. Recall that trinomials are made up of three terms, a term with the variable squared, or degree 2, a term with the variable of degree 1, where the exponent is equal to 1, and a term where we have no variable, a constant term. In this particular tutorial, we're going to look at trinomials where a is equal to 1. To factor the following trinomial, we know we are looking for the product of two binomials, so we can set up our brackets early to give us some space to work. The front term of the trinomial is of degree 2 and has a leading coefficient of 1 in front of the x squared, so we can put an x in the front of each bracket. We now need to find the numbers that go in the back of each bracket. To find these, we are looking for two numbers whose product is the n term, negative 5, and whose sum is the middle term, positive 4. 5 is a prime number, so the two numbers that we are looking for are going to be 1 and 5. Knowing the product of the two numbers is negative 5, we now know that one of these numbers must be negative. This would leave us with either negative 5 times 1 or 5 times negative 1. To know which of these options is the correct one, we need to look at the sum of the middle term, positive 4. Negative 5 plus 1 would give us negative 4. If we take 5 and add negative 1, this would give us positive 4 in the middle. This is the one we are looking for. So we now know the numbers that go in the back of each bracket are positive 5 and negative 1. We can put these numbers in the back of each bracket to complete our factors. We have now factored this trinomial into its binomial factors. Let's take a look at factoring the following trinomial. Well, one of the things we'll notice, it starts with a 3. and We haven't done that before. But wait, 3 goes into all three terms, so we can common factor that out first. This will leave us x squared minus 7x plus 12. Well, this is something we know we can factor. Knowing this is going to factor into two binomials, we can set up our brackets early, and we can put an x in the front of each of the brackets, knowing that x times x is going to give us our x squared. The task at hand now is to find the two numbers. Well, we're looking for two numbers whose product is 12, the end term, and whose sum is negative 7, the middle term. Well, we can make a list of the products that will give us 12. We have 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. Well, all three of these will definitely multiply to 12, but they will not all add to 7. So let's take a look at the potential sums we can make with these pairs of products. Well, 1 and 12 could give us a number as low as 11 or as high as 13. 2 and 6 could give us 
a low number is 4 and high is 8, and 3 and 4 could give us 1 or 7. Well, we're definitely looking for a 7, so we know our numbers are 3 and 4. Now we need to take a look at the signs. Knowing the product is positive 12, 3 and 4 must both have the same sign. Considering the sum is negative 7, we know we're going to have negative 3 and negative 4 as our numbers. We can now take those two numbers and put them in the back of each bracket, and we've completely factored our trinomial.